Something in a hurricane. <laughs> Only if you're standing in the Good evening, good people of the TikTok. Second live stream tonight. Looks like we got some new people in here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Kyle Shannon. The, the dog on lead vocals, his name is Champ. Just to set expectations, Champ's never really been a champion of anything. He is at best the recipient of a partici participation certificate. Champ is a fine, fine dog. charming to have a singing dog oh and it is it's fantastic but you ever thought about me you ever thought maybe just kyle just wants to sing a song once without accompaniment loud howling screeching semi on tune accompaniment no you just want the dog yeah i figured Ten thousand war 
clouds swarm round my head Ten million more in books written beneath my bed And I rode over it them all when searching in the swamps Still can't find how to hold my hands And I know you need me in the middle over I am stuck in here all paralyzed Four months I got myself in runs too much time Spinning mirrors framed in yellow walls <laughs> That's that dog. Source Camp recognizes the how. Welcome, 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 everybody. Glad to have you here. Tonight we're going to talk about stuff. <laughs> My cat was almost asleep. <laughs> yeah, Champ was a little rambunctious tonight, wasn't he? <laughs> He's been on it. Kyle, you're my hero. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. IT. <laughs> Certainly not your dog training hero. I learned very early in life that I'm always going to have poorly behaved dogs because when you have poorly behaved dogs, it's not the dog's fault. have well-behaved dogs you have to have this is a technical term what are called boundaries this is where my family and dogs <laughs> have uh we've made an executive decision <laughs> that the dogs will walk all over us <laughs> I really want to purchase a ChatGPT and create... Wait, I really want to purchase ChatGPT and create an assistant. You mean an agent? You could, you could probably create a... Can't you create custom GPTs without a subscription? Or maybe you need a subscription. I think you need a, need a subscription to make them. You mean a custom GPT? Custom GPT is paid only. You can go to Poe. You can make a Poe bot. Poe.com. P-O-E.com. And you can use uh, OpenAI models. Oh, no, you can't use OpenAI's models. The good ones. Unless you're paid there. But you can make chatbots at Poe. So if you mean by, assist, by assistant, you mean chatbot. You can do that at Poe for free. I just want to create my AI assistant. I don't know what that means, though. You mean like one that takes take act, takes action on your behalf? The tools aren't really there for that. OpenAI just released Swarms, which is some sort of agentic something or other. I haven't looked deeply enough into it yet to know what that is. But I would say give it three to six months, and it'll be relatively trivial to create an assistant, is my, is my guess. Right now, it still requires development. If you're a developer, you could probably do one right now. Brent Peterson is doing a lot of that stuff right now, but that's all, that's all with coding. 
You should all go to GPT and ask, what's something about me you may not know? If you have memory turned on in ChatGPT, you can ask it that question. Tell me something about me I may not know. It does a pretty good job. But your memory has to be turned on, enabled. Kyle, 10,000 likes before before 10 minutes. Wow, you guys are nuts. Girl, you're looking fine tonight. Every fella's got you in his sights. What you doing with a clown like me? Surely one of life's little mysteries So tonight I'll ask The stars above How did I ever win your love? What did I do? What did I say? Turn your angel eyes my way I'm the guy that never learned dance Never even, wait, never even got one second glance Cross a crowded room that was close enough I could look but I could never touch that's a beautiful song that is a beautiful song not the way I sung it but you know <clears throat> well John Hyatt well John Hyatt in the house all right let's do what we got to do with the hair let's get that let's get that straightened out you like the quaff we can we sell these we sell these on the TikTok shop along with Madagascar Vanilla and uh, Countertop Nugget Ice Makers. By the way, the eyebrow trimming kit comes with the quaff. This, the quaff, it's just, it's like the uh, double-sided tape you put, you know when you put like the phone holder on your dashboard, that sticky tape? That's what goes underneath the, uh, the quadruple toupee. And then you get the, uh, the eyebrow extension kit. These are not like I don't I wouldn't have eyebrows this bushy. I I actually these are this is a weave. So you just like this kind of beauty, it doesn't grow on trees, people. This is manufactured. This is a whole situation. What? Oh, this is the AI channel. I thought this was the men, the manscaping. This is not the manscaping channel. Okay, all right. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I thought my assistant Marge, um, she she spun. I don't know how to use TikTok, and she um, she spun up a different. You re, if you're into manscaping, I there's a whole. I do a whole. Um, you know how to look responsible in a mankini. I've got a workshop on that. So. Check that out on my other channel. I've got the manscaping channel. I've got the uh, old man ASMR channel. <coughs> you know, sounds like that. It's nice. Uh, I'll do snoring. I do. I do uh, realistic snoring. Um, clearing my throat, of course, is a classic. That's a favorite. That's a fan favorite. Uh-huh. 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 All right, what do you want to talk about? We lost most of the audience. <laughs> T 
Tick, TikTok, TikTok had 130 people in here. They're all like, oh, my God. <laughs> they ran out. So it's, it's back to us. <laughs> so we can do whatever you want. <laughs> Old man ASMR. <laughs> Robert Rossi liked that one. <laughs> uh, Jason wanted to know how to bring multiple digital twins into one conversation. Okay. There's two ways to do that. We can talk about that. So I was on a, I was on, Ann Murphy has a podcast called The Empowered Fundraiser Show. I am not a fundraiser, nor am I empowered, but she had a lapse in judgment and had me on her show. Um, and we had a really good talk, good talk today. She wanted me to talk about digital twins and we talked about all sorts of stuff. What's going on with AI? What's what you know? What are these ebbs and flows? How do you how do you deal with this shit? We talked a lot about that, and then we talked a little bit about digital twins. And so, to catch up on digital twins, if you don't know that term, the history of it is is really from the digital simulation world. Like a digital twin, you might have a digital twin of a I don't know of a control panel for, you know, a nuclear power plant and it's, you've got all the dials and you can turn them and it simulates. It's a digital twin of what you would do if you were in the in the control center. Um, and you can also make them of people. And there's there's kind of an infinite number of ways to do that. But a way that I stumbled upon with with a group that I work with called Content Evolution was we basically start with a structured interview. So we have ChatGPT help us come up with an interview. Like if I were going to inter interview someone to really understand who they were and, you know, what their background is and what they've done professionally and what they've done personally and, um, you know, how they solve problems and how they face adversity, all that, ChatGPT will come up with the questions for you. It's really quite good at it. And then what we discovered is... Um, if you type out the answers to that question set, the digital twins suck. They don't, they're not very good. But if you record someone, ideally you have someone else do the interview on video and then take the transcript of that. But you could also do it in audio. The reason we did it in video is because we figure at some point we'll be able to take the video and use that as the basis for a visual digital twin. This is, so this is just a GPT di digital twin. But you record someone answering the questions as if they're talking, you know, like words to another person. The digital twins get really good. They get really powerful and they, they kind of, they tend to talk like the person talks and um, they're, they're pretty good. And then what I talked about is we take those individual digital twins and we put them together into a master digital twin that was like a little community of digital twins that you could then interact with. It's pretty slick. And so the question is, can we can we do that tonight? There's a couple of ways to do it. So I will I will walk you through that. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Does anyone have their pink banner popping up on their screen for a universe? Make it stop. Oh, does anyone else have that pink banner? I don't have any pink banners. It's, is it TikTok just marketing shit? Hello, irregulars from Becky Roo. What's happening, Becky? I need to make cartoon animals. Violence like cats eating a mouse. Uh... I don't know. I wonder if I still have access to Halo or whatever the hell it's called. Is this it? Continuous Kyle. Reload. Explore. Where's my, oh, mine. Oh, I did some videos today. Hang on, look at this. So this is this Halo. That's pretty damn good. Look at that rack focus. You start out with the candle and focus and the background blurry and then watch this. That's like real damn cinematography. 
By the way, how I did these, the, the prompt for these, I went to ChatGPT and I said, write me 20 prompts for, for a single shot in a movie and give it, um, like, uh, like describe the style that you want it in as well as the, the details of it. This prompt was whispers in the mirror. Wait, let's see, let's see how good her face is. Does that still look like her? It's not bad. Looks a little different, but passable. Fisheye lens, close-up shots. A person stares into a fogged up bathroom mirror, the camera tight on their trembling face. As the fog clears, their reflection begins to emerge. It didn't quite do the prompt. It's not bad. What's this one? <laughs> That's trippy. <laughs> That's pretty trippy. Her little head movement there is weird. Keyboard cover, please. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Emilio's wife is the, uh, she is the community glare representative. She's trying to prevent glare for all community members of the AI Learning Lab. She's doing her job quite well. Look at her little head. Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> Kyle, I just sent you a rose. That's one cent. I'd like for you to acknowledge this, please. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Thank you for the rose, Becky Rue. That's very nice. I do appreciate that. Every every penny counts. Um, so let's see. Let's see. I think I still have access to this. So you get, if you sign up for this, by the way, this is H. H A I L U O Halu A I dot video. And if you sign up, you get three days for free. This is, in my opinion, and in Brent, Brent Peterson's opinion, um, closer to Suno. Well, Suno never launched, right? Suno from OpenAI that they demonstrated. You know where they talked to be about it being like a world simulation model? Uh, if not, they did. Um, but then we never got to play with it. This thing seems like that, where it's really good at panning around a, a space without the all the buildings or people around the main subject distorting. Okay, so we're going to do cartoon... inside a house where a cat catches a mouse and bites its head off. Uh, uh, uh. We'll see. All right, we'll see if it's gonna render. <laughs> That was, that was, that was a, you know, it was a graphic description. One job in queue. Let me go over to my chat GPT. I'll, I'll grab some more of these. Yeah, so here's the robbery, the stubborn door. This is Charlie Chaplin esque. The balloon negotiation. Wait, let me move. Where am I? Move this tab over next to my movie tab, and then I won't be so lost. The Pasta Perfectionist, The Unhelpful Map. That sounds good. All right, copy. All right, there's some movies being made. All right, I need to go work for OpenAI to bug Sam and tell him I want my AI agents now. I know, Jason. Hey, do me a favor, when you get a job, the first thing I want you to ask for when you get to Sam's office is the ability to search our prompt history. It's been two years, Sam.
I was wrong. Banner at top. All right. I suppose you all are speaking to yourselves now. Runway is really good. Yep. Do -do -do. Dora. Dora? Kyle, can this be the first TikToker with a Vanta Black chat background? That would actually be nice. If anybody wants to buy me a Vanta Black uh, thing of paint, I'll spray paint the... Uh, <clears throat> I'll spray paint my my paper here with Vanta Black. <laughs> so just send, send me a, uh, I assume that those bottles of, what's it called? It's called uh, like V3, V3 Vanta Black spray paint. I assume it's like 30 bucks. But if someone wants to send me some, <laughs> I'll, ma I'll make a keyboard cover out of Vanta Black. I could also get like actual black, you know, fabric or velvet or something. <clears throat> but, you know, that would be like actual production values. And we, we don't want those around here. <laughs> if you could only see my little, my, my duct taped uh, phone holder that the duct tape failed and I put clear tape on it, packing tape. <laughs> so I can, I can give you, if you want some ASMR of my, my phone mount, here you go. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, mmm. Oh, yeah. You like that tape? Mmm. <laughs> what is this channel? What is he doing? Oh, it, it ate one of the, uh, it ate one of the, I don't think it did the mouse thing. The, the mouse thing just disappeared. There were four videos running. Now there's only three. <clears throat> I think it ate the... I think it was too violent. It went away. <laughs> Sorry. That's pretty funny. And these are just in a, in a queue. Um, okay, let's go over to ChatGPT for a second. So... Okay, there's AI futures. Okay, let me flip over. I'm going to flip over to my team, team account. And I should have, okay, yeah, here we go. Okay. You've got access to Canvas. Yeah, okay. Um, so if I wanna go to my digital twin, so here's my digital twin, CE profile, Kyle Shannon. And if you wanna go play with this, you can go to the, the GPT store and search for this. And so I can say, um, Find a recent news story about Sam Altman and tell me what you think of that article. All right, so it says searching my knowledge. It should, searching the web. Searching Sam Altman. Okay, recently Sam Altman returned as CEO of OpenAI. That, okay, wait. <laughs> That's a very old story. Please, very old story. Please search the internet and find something from this past week. Searching the web. I don't know why it's taking so long to search the web. We're so used to everything being done in a second. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. 
What do you mean it wasn't done in 1.2 seconds? This is ridiculous. Let me restart. Hang on. Hold on, people. Search board. Search stopped. Uh, try again. Searching the web. All right. Searching for Sam Altman 2024 news. This week, Sam Altman's nuclear energy company, Okio. Okay, this I haven't heard from. Okay, great. This week, Sam Altman's nuclear energy, energy company. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, uh, do you think... This is significant, and why? Okay, so I am, in theory, asking myself, have you, been the in, have you seen the instruction set for search? It's pretty limited. I have not. Yes, this development is quite significant. As the tech industry, particularly companies like Google increasingly relies on AI, their energy needs are skyrocketing. Nuclear power, particularly those... Small modular react reactors, SMRs, offers a clean, reliable source of energy. Sam Altman's involvement in Oklo, Oklo or Okio, Oklo, um, a leading SMR company, places him at the forefront of the shift. It not only reinforces nuclear power's role. Um, all right, I guess that's what I would say. Um, uh, what does this have? to do with day-to-day -day AI for regular people. Mm -mm -mm. For most people, the shift will not directly impact their lives. However, it's significant for future as AI tools like ChatGPT become more widespread. Tech infrastructure requires energy. All right, so... I'm going to, so a way you can do this. So I'm in my Kyle Shannon digital twin. I can now call up. So if I hit the at key, I can pull up other GPTs. So I've got Andrea, uh, let's see, at Andrea. Oh, she's not coming up for some reason. That's weird. At, uh, let's see, at C-E. Okay, so here's some here's some CE profiles. So here's Andrea, Andrea Goldberg. And so I'm going to say, um, what do you think of this article? And then she's going to give me her opinion. The recent article... Uh, 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 let's see. The development also underscores the trend... Um, and then I can also go, wait, something went wrong. The issue persists. Please contact our help center. All right, whatever. Um, at, and then I'm going to go grab, let's see, we'll go at CE. Come on. At CE. Let's see. Here's Mike McGuire. Mike McGuire used to be a Gartner analyst. Um, do you agree with Kyle and Andrea? Explain your reason for each. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Both Kyle and Andrea offer insightful perspectives. Kyle's perspective, he highlights this. So, so I've got like these three people now interacting with one another. So one way to do this is just ad hoc. You've got access to different digital twins. And then with the at symbol, you can call them into a chat. That's one way to do it. The other way we did it, <clears throat> so again, just to explain what a digital twin is, we created a, stru a structured questionnaire that the person that we're making the digital twin of answered. And, and so it was like educational background, business background, you know, family background. I think we had some health stuff in there. We had how do you solve problems stuff in there. We had cultural stuff like 
you know, what's a piece of art that made a difference in your life? Who's a person that made a difference in your life? And what did they do? Things like that. So it's a whole bunch of questions. And how we created that is we went to ChatGPT and we said, help us craft a structured set of questions that when someone answers them, it will reveal who they are, essentially, right? Their worldview, things like that. And then we edited those. But like what I, what I learned is rather than just giving you that set of questions, just know that that's the, the thing. Because you can do different sets of questions for different scenarios. So learn to do the, learn to do the thing. Um, so we made all these individual GPTs, but then we wanted to put them into one master GPT. Now, one of the constraints of custom GPTs is that you can only upload 20 files to zero. So at the point at which we exceeded 20 people, we couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> like we couldn't add any more people because... We basically took a transcript from each person and put them into the GPT. And once we hit 20, we were done. So what we did was we created a Google spreadsheet that had all their metadata, like their you know, website, their LinkedIn profile, their phone number, their email, all that stuff. And then a field for their entire transcript. So we made a single CSV file effectively that is the source of truth for all of the different members of content evolution. I think we're up to 28 now or 30. And so we, so that, that CSV then becomes the knowledge for that larger GPT. Um, and it's really cool because you can go in and you can just say, you know, write an article from content evolution. And it basically, writes it from the point of view of these 30 people, and then it, it identifies which are the three that are most qualified to comment on this article, and then it produces quotes from the three most relevant people. Pretty slick. So I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, I know that answers your question, but it I feel like it was a shitty answer. So anyway, have you seen the instruction set for search? Pretty limited. Okay. Of course, the answer is Excel. Yeah, I mean, you know, until further notice. I mean, quite honestly, um, Daily Crunch, the we wouldn't need to. Like ChatGPT is so good at at eating and digesting unstructured data that we could have just pasted all that shit into a Word document. That's we had all the metadata for these things in a Word document. The problem was it made it really hard to edit. So we just threw it into an Excel sheet and now it's in there. So um, this would make a great video. Yeah, it, <laughs> that feels like work. <laughs> I don't see. Here's the thing with ADHD. Once you build shit, like making a video of it, it's like, ah, but I already built it. Now I don't want to make a video of it. <laughs> I'm whiny. I've got diverticulitis. We're Doug and Wendy Weiner. Um, I'd love it if I could put the clip of that description into the salon. You can do that as soon as I do this. <laughs> Whatever do this means. Um, as soon as I <laughs> post this up to YouTube, feel free to grab it. So just today's the October 16th. So just note down October 16th. And as soon as you see... October 16th up on the um, up on the YouTube channel. You can feel free to go grab it and chop it up if you want. Um, I'm, I'm like two weeks behind right now on that, so. But I will do that for you. Ba -da -da -da. Oh, there's also, it's possible some people are recording this right now because I know T-Rock will sometimes record these things and, and he'll... Um, He'll wait till I put on a pink bow and then he'll just take the recording of me looking like an idiot and he puts that out on the internet. So so you can do that too if you want. <laughs> reach reach out to one of the irregulars that is uh, pirating my content for, for entertainment value. <laughs> All right, let's see. Brandon gave me a very nice list of shit that we could talk about. Let's go through it, shall we? 
Can you talk about the questions in the interview? Yeah, so <clears throat> so here, let's just go, we'll, we'll go make a set of questions. Because it's it sounds more, <laughs> it sounds more um, complicated than it is. Because if, if you've not r written like, you know, surveys and questionnaires and, and, you know, things like that, then this can be really intimidating. But here's, <laughs> here's the good news. <laughs> we now live in a world where you don't need to know shit anymore. You don't need to be an anthropologist or a sociologist or a, a fucking, I don't know, survey monkey PhD holder. Um, you can just go to chat GPT and ask it shit. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm creating a digital twin based on the transcript of an interview where the questions are structured and designed to capture as much about the person being interviewed as possible. I want to capture educational background, professional background, how the person solves problems, the worldview, things that might have inspired them, how they react to adversity, how they react to success, and any other thing that you think might be relevant, period. Group the questions in categories to make them easier to manage and sort them in order that make most intuitive sense for the interviewee to answer. For example, start with name and location, etc. period. Memory updated. Here's the structure. Okay. Personal information and background. What's your full name? Where are you currently located? Um, where'd you grow up? Can you briefly describe your family background, educational background, professional background, problem solving and decision making? How do you typically approach uh, solving problems, whether professional or personal? Uh, okay. So let's, let's let these keep going. <clears throat> Okay, these questions are fine, but they're Okay, these questions are fine, but they're a little predictable and generic. Period. I want you to act like a master survey writer, comma, and cultural anthropologists, and I want you to ask significantly more interesting and revealing questions. For example, include a question about a piece of art that changed someone's life and questions with a similar creative approach, period. The idea here is that by answering these questions, we'll get as full a picture as possible of who this person is. The other reason we did this like this was we, we wanted to be able to, we wanted to be able to ask all of the people we made digital twins for the same set of questions. We wanted it to capture, you know, kind of the essence of who they were, like not put as much emphasis on here's the shit I did in my life, put more emphasis on like, who are they? So let's see if your life were a novel, what would the opening scene look like? That's good. Who or what shaped you to see the way the world before you were even aware of it. Can you think of a moment in your childhood looking back that feels like a defining moment in who you became as an adult? Like those are three really good questions, right? And so, so this, is, this is how we did it. And now there's way too many, right? There's, there's 12 sections of three questions each. That's 36 questions. So let's go. Okay, these are much better, but right now you have 12 sections with three questions each. Why don't we reduce this? to 
seven sections with three questions each. Kyle, he wants you to put your convo in the salon, please. What do you mean, my convo? You mean the the uh, the transcript of my of my digital twin? I I I don't I don't want to do it because the the specific question set we did for content evolution is proprietary to content evolution. There's there's too many other people involved, but this is exactly how we did it. So. <clears throat> Um, sorry for being away, been dealing with medical issues. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay Hamilton, but welcome back. I hope you're, I hope you're healing well or dealing well, whatever the case may be. I'd be curious what Claude Opus would come up with. Exactly. Listen, that's the thing with all these things, um, you know, go, oh, you know what might be interesting is to have O one one do it. All right. So now we've got 21 questions. So here's your 20 questions, right? Education, and was there a class or subject in school that felt like a revelation to you? Something that made you see the world in a completely different way? Like, that's a good one. For me, it was theater history, of all things. And not because I loved theater history. I fucking hated history. But I had a teacher that totally fucking brought it to life. What skill or piece of knowledge you've taught yourself outside of formal education that you now consider crucial to who you are? These are great questions. They're great questions. And, and you know, like, why does it write such great, great questions? Because all of the structured interviews that have ever been put on the Internet by all of the people that got PhDs in writing these kind of questions, they're all in the fucking LLM. They're all just in there. So if you can basically tell it, <laughs> make me good shit, it will make you good shit. Now, I'll show you another cool thing. So I'm in GPT-4.0, right? So this list now is not editable. And I'm like, oh, I want to edit that or I want to edit that. I can now flip over to GPT-4 with Canvas. And if you don't know what this is, it's going to make an editable thing. So I'm going to say, do me a favor, with Canvas. And if you don't know what this is, it's going to make an editable thing. So I'm going to say, do me a favor, with Canvas. And if you don't know what this is, it's going to make an editable thing. So I'm going to say, do me a favor. Canvas. And if you don't know what this is, it's going to make an editable thing. So I'm going to say, do me a favor and sorry, I just got an Amber alert. Um, okay. Do me a favor and pop this, do me a favor and pop this list of questions into the canvas. Oh. Boop. And so now my set of questions is editable. And so I can go in and I could say, let's see. Let's grab this section. And then I say, ask ChatGPT. I'm going to say, um, this section is currently missing. This section is currently missing basic information like name, profession, etc. period. We should also add a new section for professional background. All right. So now we've got basic information. There's our little early stuff, education, professional background. Can you describe your career journey so far? How did you get started, major transitions, etc.? What's been the most rewarding project or work experience you've had? Have you had any significant mentors or influencers? Yeah, so this is quite good. So this is essentially it, right? So now it's a nine, nine question. So that's nine times three is 27, 27 questions. So that's like a half hour interview. And what you do is you just, you know, pull, put that shit up 
And ideally, you have someone, you record this, have someone record you or do, do like a Zoom call with someone you know where they can watch you answer the questions. And if you try to weasel out of a, answering a question, they can like slack you or they can even say it. It doesn't matter if there's extra shit in your interview. They can just say, hey, can you dig deeper on that? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. Well, you know, I, you know, whatever. Dig deeper. All right. Make sense? Good. We got it. I got a shutdown for violating terms of service with Pi. Only once, and it was a long time ago. Huh, that's interesting. All right. Let's go back. Let's see what Brandon's got for us. Adobe Video. Yeah, so Adobe, Adobe's doing Adobe Max right now. If you want to see a bunch of cool shit, just go to Twitter and type in Adobe Max and just go watch a bunch of the videos. We can look at some of them tonight. But but basically, Adobe, when when I first started the, the salon in December of 2022, a good buddy of mine worked at Adobe, and he worked in the AI group, John Knack. And he came and he spoke at the, the salon. And John, um, the first time he spoke, he showed us some AI stuff that Adobe was working on. But he said, we haven't really made a decision whether we're going to, you know, launch this stuff. And then two months later, out came Firefly. And they launched it. And so... If you look at the Adobe Max videos, what you're seeing is the fruits of the fact that they they went in early aggressively with AI. You're starting to see the results of, you know, things they're adding to their tools that are pretty pretty miraculous. There's one now that's called, I forget what it's called. But you basically take like a you chop a person out of picture A and you put them into picture B where the lighting's completely different and and you just say make it look the same and it just goes relights it shadows it's crazy it's bonkers mm -mm -mm -mm. question how does your digital twin answer stuff for you that you have no knowledge about because it's connected to the it's connected to gpt4 so it just does now what you would what you would argue is well that's not really a digital twin correct <laughs> um but but it um but it does it through my worldview lens. It's it's fascinating. Um and like if you do brainstorming with it, it tends to be really good because it kind of knows how you think. What is happening with the image show and tell on the Mighty Channel? I don't know. Is something going on there? Image show and tell. Did, did we get invaded? Image tools. Show and tell. I don't know. <laughs> it seems normal to me. I don't know what's going on, Daniel Quebecer. What... <laughs> What's the question? I mean, I mean, I know what the question is. What's the, what's the purpose of the question? Just go into the, go into the salon and hang out. Oh, no more images and show and tell. I think. Ah, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so we cha we changed some things. Got it. Got it. Got it. I thought I thought we were like invaded by like hackers or trolls. <laughs> okay, so let me let me catch everyone else up. So where I'm where I'm going right now is I'm going to the community site for the AI salon. So if you go to the salon.ai, that's our website. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a button that says join our community. And if you click on join our community, that'll take you over to AI salon.mn.co, the mighty networks. And, okay, so there's a couple of things. So, so we've done some rearranging, Daniel. And, and if you haven't been in in a while, there, there's, I, I'm really excited about the changes. 
but they are different. So let me walk you through them. Uh, can I widen that? No. Okay. So the first thing we did is we created a new welcoming sequence called Start Your Adventure. And it's seven steps. There's You start with welcome. And there's a, a welcome video from Leah and I um, welcoming everyone to the, uh, to the salon. Um, and then, you know, we talk about our play first, mindfully create, generously lead. Then you introduce yourself. Then you learn our values. Then you can, here's a link to all of our past meetings. Um, you can RSVP for the next event. Which, by the way, the, the next um, Salon Presents was supposed to be on November 5th, which is election night. So I just figure everyone's going to be worried about that rather than this. So we're, we're not doing it uh, next, uh, the first weekend or the first Tuesday of November is not happening. Um, and then hang out and chat is is that thing, and then help us grow is basically our social media channel. So so that seven step onboarding process that's new. We all we then also really cleaned up what we're now calling community cor corner, which is salon announcements. We added a new section called call for collaborators. So if you want to put together a project and you want collaborators, you can start your own little um, threads in here uh, to see if you can get people to to you know join you on a project. You can ask for help. Uh, about the community, and then you can give people shout outs. Then there's a news section, and then there's a whole new area called tools and play. So all of the show and tell areas are inside the tools and play. So every one of these sections now has three areas. There's the tools tab, the tool talk tab, <laughs> where you can chat about this stuff, and then there's show and tell. And so all of the show and tells that were there before are still there, but that's now within each of these areas. And so this allows people to play with different tools. And, you know, we're updating, we're updating these sections based on, you know, what people are talking about and what they request be put in there. Uh, but you can go in and you can ask questions. So this is a new, really powerful area. So that's, that's where show and tell went. So sorry about that. I didn't quite understand the question. <clears throat> All right. Ah, ah, said Daniel. <laughs> it makes so much sense now. But da 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 Yeah, I, we were actually worried that that was going to be a, a real problem. And just people sort of, you know, intuitively jumped in and kept, kept adding things into the show and tell area. So we basically took the show and tell channels and just added the tool lists to it is, is effectively what we did. And then added, added in a little chat section. Um, so anyway, yeah, but anyway, this is the salon. If you're, if you're not a part of the salon, this is a really powerful community, um, where, you know, our values are like, who can you expect to be in here? You can expect people in here to be curious. Curiosity is one of our values. Playful. Like there's the, the douche, the douche quotient is very low in this community. Like you have a lot of very generous people that are playful and curious and, um, Empathy, empathetic, bravery, willing to take a risk, willing to try new shit, willing to feel like, you know, a complete outsider and, you know, um, feel completely clueless, but do it anyway. And then the final one is generosity. This is a, this is a community full of people that are generous in their willingness to share what they know. You know, we've got... Paid in here, Paid and I joke all the time and, you know, go back and forth on stuff. He's, he's, uh, uh, he works at Google on their, on their TPU, uh, group, uh, doing sort of high end AI stuff. And he is completely willing to come in and explain how stuff works technically, things like that. We've got, you know, similar people with, uh, like Peter Kaminsky. We'll teach you how to make stuff in Mid Journey, and so will Claire. And there's a there's a club with Brandon and Claire, Dr. J in here, um, called uh, Everyday Life Hacks, where you can you know figure out all sorts of cool shit you can do with AI to just make your life better. It's a it's a cool group. So if you have not joined it, you should go join it and become a loving, generous, brave empathetic, playful, curious soul. <laughs> Cause if it, here's the fucking deal. Like social media is fucking nasty, right? Everyone's down to cut everyone else down. Everyone's jealous of everyone. 
the thing about this AI stuff is it's so profound and it's so um, – it's moving so fast that it's essentially impossible to keep up with it. So by being in a community like this, you surround yourself with people that have figured out some piece of the puzzle, right? There's, there's a million pieces of this puzzle we're trying to solve. And any one of us can maybe handle three or four pieces, right? If we're really capable. If you're like, I'm just getting started, you might just have one corner of one piece. And that's fine. Because I guarantee you that little corner is some, some corner that someone else hadn't, hadn't figured out yet. And because it's a community that is curious, they're constantly learning new pieces. And because they're playful, there's not like the angst and stress of like, we got to figure it out. We got we to gotta make things more efficient. And, <laughs> and then because people are generous, they're willing to share what they're learning. So you can come into this community and be... And get up to speed with this AI stuff dramatically faster than you could have otherwise. And that's what this channel's about. I go live here five nights a week. If you've not been here before, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, weeknights, I go live. And it's chat ADD. Like what I can promise you is I don't have an agenda. I will not have an agenda. I don't like agendas. They give me agita. I occasionally finish a sentence. You can make money with ChatGPT. Many times I don't. But this isn't about me. What this is about, this is about this community hanging out together and supporting one another and hanging out over on the AI salon, answering each other's questions here, welcoming new people in. Oh, this is where Kyle, he's just acting like an idiot right now. He'll, he'll calm down soon enough. You know, they'll come in and talk about how I should trim my nose hair. <laughs> Send me free minoxidil things for my um, gravity-challenged hairline. <laughs> it's a loving group to each other. <laughs> They're very mean to me. <laughs> All right, what else has Brandon got for us? Back to Chat EDD. So how, wait, so how or where the idea of this community came from, which is great. Thank you, Ocean. Um, I, so, so I was already getting pretty sold on generative AI. I was doing a lot of stuff with stable diffusion and a thing called Dream Booth, where I could upload pictures of myself and make like these crazy self portraits. So I started an art project in like fall of 2022 um, called Kyle Shannon Dreams. And it was just all these weird ass portraits of me and I'd write stories for them. And um, because of that, a good friend of mine I used to work with at agency.com said, hey, will you talk to my friend Leah? She's a photographer here in Boston. And she wants to know, like, what the hell are you doing to make these images? And I'm like, sure, I'll, sure, I'll talk to her. So Leah called me and we talked for a couple of times and, you know, I told her what I was doing and she told me what she was doing and she just had this really cool attitude. I'm like, are you doing anything in AI? She's like, no, I've been a photographer for 20 years and I made the transition from film to digital and now I'm kind of excited about figuring out this AI stuff and so I want to know what you're doing. And, and we just talked about that idea of just being in this curious space about it. And then right in the middle of that, conversation chat gpt drops and we had been kind of talking about i wonder if we put together like a little group to you know figure this shit out and so chat gpt dropped and i fucking lost my mind i was like holy shit this changes everything and and to to give you a little bit of context back in the mid 90s I had a very similar epiphany about the World Wide Web. I'm like, holy shit, this web thing changes everything. But nobody knows about it yet. And so 
I started one of the early digital uh, magazines, an art and culture magazine called Urban Desires, and I started an agency called Agency.com, which was one of the first digital agencies. And we built a lot of the websites for the Fortune 500 when nobody really knew what websites were because it was super simple. There were like six HTML tags. Like it, it didn't take much, but it took curiosity and it took um, a whole community coming together. So back in the 90s, I started this group called the World Wide Web Artist Consortium in New York City. And we became like it, the, you know, industry group um, for, for East Coast web development, right? So because what New York had that San Francisco didn't was the whole media world, right? They had all publishing and things like that. And so, so my experience putting that group together was like, I knew it was required. I knew that nobody was an expert. I knew that everybody was trying to figure it out. This is what I learned back then. Everybody was trying to figure it out. The only way you could actually learn stuff was like hang out with other weirdos that were talking about the World Wide Web. So the minute ChatGPT came out, I was like, holy shit, this is one of those. And so I just said to Lee, I said, I said, we're starting the salon. And we went and got the URL and we booked a meeting. And seven days after ChatGPT launched, we had our first meeting here. And I think probably within a week or two of that, I started this TikTok channel. Um, just as a way, I, you know, it's funny. I selfishly started this channel because I thought if I, if I, if I put myself on the hook for explaining how this shit works to other people, I need to learn it well enough that I know how to use it. <laughs> it was very selfish, right? Um, and then about three or four months after that, I started doing these lives. So April of 2023. April 30th, 2023 was the first live. And I just made a commitment. I was, uh, at the time, I was doing a lot of sim racing. Like I have a racing rig. So I was racing people on virtual car tracks. And I'd come home and I'd eat dinner and then I'd race for two or three hours. <laughs> I was just wasting my life. <laughs> and I thought, what if... Instead of racing for two or three hours a night, I went live for two, th two or three hours a night. So I just made a commitment. And so for 365 days, except for the days I was banned by TikTok for saying stupid shit, um, I went live. And then once I hit a year, I dropped it down to five days a week. So, so that's why it's weekdays now. But that's the, that's the origin story of it. So... Um, I think, I think a lot of people don't quite get the shift that, that ChatGPT caused. So pre-ChatGPT, if you wanted to be an AI, you essentially had to be an engineer. You had to understand what APIs were. You had to understand if you go into the, the ChatGPT playground, what different models were. And you, there was documentation and you had to read that shit. And if you really wanted to like do your own AI, you had to understand what weights were and what embeddings were and what fucking math was. And you're like, Ugh. if you're like me, you looked at it and you're like, I want it to be easier. <laughs> and then ChatGPT came out and it was like, ah, this is where I come in. Because one of the things that I've historically been really good at is when one of these moments happen, I don't know what it is. It's just my sort of natural curiosity. <laughs> like that tipping point, you know, it, it, for AI, it's November 30th, 2022. It is crystal clear. For the World Wide Web, it was 1989, whenever Tim Berners-Lee came up, came up with the HTTP protocol. And then when, when, and what, when it really was, was like 1993, 94, when the first web browser came out, right? So that was that was kind of the inflection point for the World Wide Web was was really 93-94. With AI, it's quite specific. November 30th, 2022, OpenAI launches ChatGPT. 
A fun fact that many people don't know is that the instructions for how to build ChatGPT were in the documentation of GPT-3's dev site for a year. And nobody built that shit. And Sam Altman said to the tech team, you have two weeks to build it. Microsoft was about to announce a billion dollar investment in OpenAI. And Sam Altman said, you have two weeks. And so the team said, oh, go build that thing that's in the documentation. Yeah, go build that. Okay. <laughs> they built it. They went out for drinks the night before it was going to launch. And they, they, they assumed maybe it would get shared a couple of hundred times and, you know, 5,000 comments, something like that. Five days later, they had a million users. Six weeks later, they had 100 million users. Fastest adoption of technology in history with no marketing. That's the beginning. And I, I, I did some research. I mean, no, I didn't do research. I asked ChatGPT once, <laughs> how many developers are there in the world? Like, what's the percentage? And it's incredibly low. Like being generous, 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 it's maybe 2%. It's probably more like 1.2%. So prior to November 30th, you know, 1.2% of, of the Earth's population, you know, who could be, who could be developers, had access to AI. And after November 30th, the other 98.8% of people got access to it. That's, that's what's going to change everything. I mean, yes, we need the technologists to build it, to make it efficient, to do all that. But now that it's in our hands, you know. We watched a video last night from Joy Purdy, who's in here. A seven-minute video she did using generative... Audio, generative music, generative images, generative video, clever editing, just just like elbow grease of just her brute force learning how to do it. Brilliant film. It, it was so good that I said, she's definitely got a, a, like a filmmaking background. And so she was on last night and I said, you have a filmmaking background, right? And she's like, no. I'm just a lady that works in healthcare. <laughs> so that's why this exists because and and you know Sam Altman talks about this a lot. He says there's only so much we can do in the lab. There's only so much testing and training we can do in the lab because we're engineers. We're going to look at what these tools are through a very particular lens. And it's only when we put these tools out in the world to the other 98.8% .8 and say, what are you going to do with this thing? Oh, they're making a lot of children's books. There's a lot of cookbooks being made. Huh. Interesting. So that's what this is all about. What are we going to do with it? And by we, I mean the rest of us. How are you going to use it in work? How are you going to use it at home? How are you going to use it with your friends? Oh, I'd never use it with my friends. They, they, they don't like AI. Well, then they haven't fucking played with it. You know? Uh, uh, uh. Is Joy's video in the AI salon? It is. AILL is a Gen X echo chamber for the most part. That's just mean, Pate. <laughs> Pate's just under Gen X, so he's a little bitter. He's got millennial rage toward the Gen Xers. <laughs> but it's true. It is totally a Gen X echo chamber. He's not. Here's the thing about Pate. He says things that are mean, but they're also true, which is really annoying. <laughs> but also, not for nothing... We got some Gen Xers that are pretty kick-ass at, at generative AI, which I think is pretty fucking cool. Like a lot of people, oh, Joy Purdy's in here. Hey, Joy. 
Yes, in video show and tell. <laughs> and Pate's like, eh, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> mean but accurate. <laughs> Raise his hand. Yes, Ann Murphy. How can we help you? I by the way, I had a blast, Ann, on your on your podcast today. So thank you for that. That was that was really awesome. Are they making fun of Gen X? No, just Pate's making fun of Gen X. Oh yeah, it's a very talented group. I use it on my sites. What's that? The bomb? <laughs> I I use the bomb on my sites too. <laughs> it's just a rash. <laughs> oh, you're raising your hand because you're a Gen Xer, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, same raises his hand because Gen X and good at generative AI. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll put up. I'll put up my batch of Gen X batshit crazy irregulars here against your fucking Gen Z. Don't give a shit about the world. Any day of the week, we will fucking mop the floor with you, your, your zennials. <laughs> Yo, man, I don't know why you're so excited about this AI stuff. Whatever, Dad. I've got two of them upstairs. They don't give a fuck about this stuff. I'm like, this is, this is your ticket to like fuck you, the older generations. Yeah, whatever. Like. <laughs> The Gen Xers are like, all right, well, they, they fucking forgot about us on the news. I guess we'll just fuck things up with, with AI. <laughs> we got a chip on our shoulder and we get joy out of it. <laughs> we will offend you. We will trigger you. We will absolutely trigger you. And now because of AI, we're going to be much better at triggering you than, than we were without it. Because we can be much more articulate about the 17 different ways we can offend you. <laughs> so much joy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. In 4.0, lead a prompt with slash reason, and it will invoke 01 preview. We were there at the beginning of the internet, and now this. Uh, you know, Lori K., I think, I mean, for me, that... That's the only explanation I can figure out of why Gen X gets this so much and is so fucking passionate about it. And again, I think Pate's got a point that my particular <laughs> worldview is skewed by the fact that this is a bit of a Gen X echo chamber. But like a lot of the Gen Xers in here are consistent. Their kids don't give a shit about it. The young people don't give a shit about it. Um, and... Uh, but but like Gen Xers that like once they see it, they're like, ah, this is like that early Internet shit. And a lot of them are like, this is like that early Internet shit that I missed. And I swore if I ever got the chance to do this shit again, I wouldn't miss it this time. So I think there's some of that going on, too. <clears throat> so I think you're right on spot on. I feel we worked and broke all the rules to survive. Yep, that's right. <laughs> it's. It's a totally fine echo chamber. If it's if it's an AI echo chamber too, not too bad. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I feel the same way. I grew up watching the Jetsons. Joey, isn't it amazing that with the exception of flying cars, but now we've got drones. So so we're actually not that far from flying cars. Like all of the tech on the Jetsons, all of it, we're within three years of. It's bizarre. I kind of feel like a lot of the Star Trek technology, we, we got about half of the Star Trek technology out of the way with the internet and the World Wide Web and social media and small, you know, smartphones. Like, like I feel like we got, you know, half of it out of the way. And, and there's probably, AI is probably going to do like, you know, the next 35%. <laughs> So there's still like the 15% of, you know, the particle beamers and shit like that. But like the room where you walk in and it just turns into a different, you know, it turns into like a Western town. Like we're not that far from that. <laughs> it's fucking, fucking crazy living in a post sci-fi world. My son was born after ChatGPT was launched. Wow. I can't imagine what his gen will do or have. 
I mean, pay that's that like kids that are born right now. You know, if you think about kids that were born when the internet was first firing up, kids that were born that always had the internet, always had it always on. So probably kids that were born kind of 2000 and up, like my kids were born 1999. And like they've lived their whole lives with the internet being connected. And like your kid is going to grow up in a time where he can literally go, I want this. <laughs> and then it will be manifested, right? <laughs> It'll be 3D printed or it will be, you know, a video game will emerge. That's bonkers. It's bonkers. It's like we Gen Xers, we had to watch the fucking secret. Remember the secret? You know, think it and it will manifest. It, it was all like this esoteric shit. But now with generative AI, you literally ask for it. It's like, there it is. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need no stinking secret. <laughs> we, we got Gen AI. <laughs> What's amazing in Star Trek, they never showed anything automated by AI other than talking, yeah, talking to the, to the bridge. <clears throat> it feels like manifestation. It totally is manifestation. The secret was so ridiculous because <laughs> we're living in a pre-AI world and I'm just a pre-AI girl because we are living. Yeah, that's good. I like it. <clears throat> I love that age. So much fun. Babies are awesome. AI guy, we finally get, get to be George and Jane. <laughs> Jane, Jane, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> oh man I think because we're all the same exact same media at exactly the same time the future was speeding up yeah that, that could be part of it yeah I mean I think I kind of feel like Gen Xers are, are you know we're definitely the last generation to understand what monolithic media was right like when i grew up there were three networks that was it three networks and then the uhf channels that you know just came in all fuzzy <laughs> i'll never forget i when i was five years old i invented the dvr so i'm watching whatever show and my mom comes into the room and she's like, okay, Kyle, time for bed. And I'm like, okay, but if I turn this off, can I, can I keep watching this in the morning? And she said, yes. And I was like, great. And so I turned off the TV and I went to bed. And then I woke up in the morning like you do. And I'm like, awesome. I'm going to go finish that show. And I turned on the TV and the fucking news was on. And I said, mom, where's my show? And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> She didn't know what, what I was asking. I'm like, you said if I turned it off, it would be here when I came in. It's not here. She goes, no, that, that's not how it works. So I didn't have the technical capability back then. But at five, I knew <laughs> how the DVR worked. It just didn't exist yet. <laughs> My first little design studio was called Attraction Industries because of the secret. Beautiful, fantastic. Yeah, my wife and I, we did The Secret, we did Tony Robbins, um, we did The Forum, Landmark Forum, we did it all. Like, we're, you know, we're fucking hippie actors from, from way back. <laughs> we still do. My, uh, my co-founder and I with Storyvine, we'll, we'll bring in psychics. We're like, what's going on? Are we going to close this business? <laughs> Hands across America. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> attraction studios that's awesome hands across america was fantastic and then there was up with people remember up with people we don't, we don't need those stinking therapy we're just gonna go to the fucking theater and we're gonna we're gonna fucking dance our way out of this we will not feel feelings up with people <laughs> yeah up with people <laughs> we are the world exactly we had it all people don't know how good we had it i don't think we knew how good we had it 
<laughs> Bob Dylan sings, ah, we are the world, we are the people, ah. <laughs> It was funny. I saw. I just saw a documentary. Like they they finally got Bob Dylan to agree to come to We Are the World, and Dylan shows up, and there's like the world's best singers in the room, and so Dylan starts trying to sing, <laughs> and I think it was uh, Lionel Richie pulled him aside, and he's like, "Dude, no, just do you. <laughs> you don't need to sing." <laughs> so that's why he's like, "Rah rah rah rah, yeah rah rah." Uh, I don't actually feel old, but at the DMV today, a girl was getting a license. Date of birth, 10-16-2008. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm like, I'm like, I'll see, I'll see something on TV like, you, you know, um, you know, 80s flashback. And I'm like, oh yeah, 80s. That was a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh, that was like 45 years ago. Oh God. <laughs> I go into flop sweats. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, the We Are the World video <laughs> makes me cry. <laughs> it was definitely a tearjerker. Oh my God, you mean nobody thought Dylan could sing? <laughs> I thought I was crazy. <laughs> I, I have never... I, I, I appreciate the space that Dylan fills in... in in cultural history, <laughs> but I never, I never got it. <laughs> it's like he's he sings like an SNL parody of himself. <laughs> he's from Minnesota. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God! Do you want to know a a brilliant but incredibly depressing film? is Inside Lewin Davis. If you have not seen that film, if you if you like Dylan and you like that era of music, Inside Lewin Davis is essentially about a musician who just missed being Bob Dylan. <laughs> he's like he's like just at the end of his career, he's singing all these shitty bars and this kid shows up that starts singing these songs and he's like, I don't get it. And then the audience fucking loses their mind and it's Bob Dylan. And so it's a movie about not Bob Dylan. <laughs> it's so fucking depressing. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's very well done though. <clears throat> Happy early birthday, Pate. When's your birthday, buddy? That's cool. How the hell did he have a music career? Well, I, I, you know, listen, I, it's the thing about the you know there are certain people like like I feel like there are certain people that are just who they are and they're they're so specific that they rise kind of in spite of whatever else is going on, right? Dylan was just. Like his commentary, like it was his commentary and his and his commitment to that message and his commitment to his poetry. It was all about the words, and no one else was doing that. And I like I look at I look at Billie Eilish, and I think she's like that, where she just like she seemed to just emerge out of nowhere. There was nothing else like her, and it and it was just like it was a singular voice. There's there's that video. Have you seen the video of? Um, Pharrell Williams watching Maggie Rogers, listening to Maggie Rogers' song Alaska for the first time. Um, where the song starts playing and you just see his, he's like, and, and the song ends and he goes, I have zero, zero notes for you. And he says, you are you are doing a singular thing and he goes no one can judge that you either like it or you don't but you can't compare it to anything else because there's nothing to compare it to so i feel like there's you know th these come along i don't know every five years every seven years something like that and they just emerge because they're not the other 
So, and, and, and the time is right, you know. The thing that made me feel oldest recently, 20th anniversary of Shaun of the Dead. I'm telling you, Pate, man, it just gets worse and worse. I remember I was at, a, at agency.com. We were, we were growing a little too fast. And I think I had taken over the – I was the chief people officer. I was the, the chief HR guy because we were fucking up people's lives. And I was like, someone's got to fix this. And I remember being in an onboarding meeting. We had just hired like 20 people. And so I'm in a room full of 20 people that are new hires. And I said, you know, agency.com, it's like Soylent Green. Nothing. <laughs> and I was like, it's the people. Nothing. <laughs> nobody knew what Soylent Green was. No, Nobody got the reference. And I just, I remember breaking into a flop sweat going, oh my God, I'm old. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> and then it's just, and then it just after that, everything's worse. Like everything's an old reference to things that you thought, the things that you think are still contemporary <laughs> that they're not even, in, you know, they're, they're still in the print version of the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> that's the deal man that's the deal with aging <laughs> every third month or so the ai learning lab takes a sharp right down down memory lane it's true it's the people is the only thing i know about soylent green exactly like if you know soylent green at all you know it's the people <laughs> soylent green is people it's a funny joke if you're in hr and you're like it's about the people but it's not and and today it would be really bad. So you, you so now that I understand the reference, are you you are you saying that cannibalism is acceptable? Uh, oh my! I don't know that I can work here. This is a very aggressive environment. This is I. Oh my! I, you're the, and you're the head of HR. Um, hmm. Uh, could I? I don't. Who would I talk? To? I. I think I'm just gonna go. Okay. Okay. I watched Soylent Green recently. It's pretty rad. It's a great movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. But it is ancient history. It was like the 70s. <laughs> Charlton Heston before he looked old. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever is still great. <laughs> you, this is definitely a Gen X <laughs> echo chamber. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I said we would look at Brandon's list. He keep look, this is a long list of shit we could talk about. He doesn't want us to talk about old people stuff. He's a little younger, Brandon. He's enthusiastic. He's smart. But he doesn't have the, you know, edge of us old people. Hang on. Anthropic founder on AGI. Okay, this is actually an important one. What time is it? I'm not going to go to it, but go do yourself, if, if you haven't heard of this, do yourself a favor and go Google Machines of Loving Grace by Dario Amade. So Machines of Loving Grace is a 15,000 word essay that the founder of Anthropic wrote sometime this past week. And it's an incredibly optimistic view of the impact of AI that's coming. And it's it's a long read. It's 15,000 words. If you're like me and you're like, I can't read 15,000 words, pop the URL into ChatGPT and say, summarize this. Or even better, I did this one. This is fun. Go to Notebook LM and pop the URL into Notebook LM and then create an audio overview. You can create a little podcast where they'll talk about Machines of, of Loving Grace. But he, he talks with, with some specificity about, you know, the, the areas in our lives that are going to improve dramatically over the coming years. Like, you know, in, in, in terms of like biological improvement, we're going to see a hundred years of biological improvement in five to ten years. Things like that. And this is coming from the guy that's, you know, one of the, he was a co-founder of Open AI, and then he left to form Anthropic, which is Claude, right? Claude, if you've used Claude, this is the guy that created it. So 
that's worth going and looking at. Machines of Love and Grace. Sam Altman interview. I, I don't care right now or maybe ever. Um, OpenAI has a new agentic preview called Swarm. Okay, here's the fucking thing. <laughs> if you run a company that does things that are like science fiction shit, don't name your product after dystopian fucking <laughs> ideas. Don't call agents swarms. <laughs> don't call the thing that you look into to, to give yourself human identity the orb. Don't design your, your fancy windowless van that holds 20 people to look like something out of Blade Runner, Elon Musk. <laughs> like, stop scaring us with your stupid fucking names. <laughs> call it like sunshine and fairies. You got a PR issue here. Everybody thinks the robots are going to kill us. And the first thing you come out with around agents, you call it swarms? Really? <laughs> I've been waiting to hear your take on swarm. My first take is rename it. <laughs> how about, how about um, cuddle, cuddle of assisting agents? <laughs> You just cuddle with them and they do things for you. No, no. We're going to make a swarm of agents and we're going to go out and swarm you up a job. It's like, could, could we not have it be that name? All right. I, I'm telling you, you know what I need to, I, I, I think I need to do this. I think I need to start a, a, a an AI branding company and just say, okay, from Sam Altman, okay, Sam Altman, first in line. Let's deal with this 40010, 4.0, 40, We're going to retire that. Like, nice try. Good logical thinking. We're going to call this one GPTR for GPT reasoning. We're going to call this one GPT every day. Canvas is okay, but not quite. We'll call it something close, but we'll make that better. And then just, I just need, I just need every AI founder to just, I need you to step in line. I need you to walk up and you know what? We're going to do this like this, like Lucy, like the doctor is in, you put 10 cents in the cup, but it, but now because of inflation, it'll be $10,000. You put $10,000 in the cup and then you tell me the names of your products why did he name it that? Exactly. So, Kim, the first thing, this is what this is my commitment to all AI founders. When you tell me the name of your products, the first thing I promise I will do is go, oh, really? And that'll be our starting point, right? Because then I'll say, really? And they'll go, what? And I'll go, you seriously don't know. I'll, they'll be like, no. And then I'll be like, okay. And then I'll go to Netflix and I'll pull up Blade Runner and I'll pull up this and I'll pull up that. And I'm like, see where the swarms are shooting lasers into people's eyes and they swarm around their heads. And it, you, you know that? That's why we're not going to call it a swarm. Do, do you know the killer bees in the Southwest? that They, they swarm and they hurt doggies and people. Okay, we're, so we're not going to do that. Oh, I, we hadn't made that connect. We just thought because this a swarm behavior. Yeah. Oh no, I understand how you got there, but we're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be called fuzzy cuddles. We're going to swarms is going to be called fuzzy cuddles, and and you have your little buddies in a fuzzy cuddle. So the fuzzy cuddle is the group. And you got your buddies in the group and your buddies do little fun things for you. They do fun tricks. So we're going to have buddies that do fun tricks in a fuzzy cuddle. All right. Next. <laughs> That'll be $10,000, please. Move it on. <laughs> ah, damn swarms. The orb. <sighs> it's, it's, it hurts. <laughs> My hand hurts. Could, could we not? 
Well, well, AI, yeah, it's really just a probability engine. No, it's not to anyone else it's not. To everyone else it's fucking magic. They all think the robots are going to kill them. Do you understand that? Uh, well, that's, it, it doesn't it doesn't make logical sense because the well the the, uh, the 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 probabilistic engine is it's 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 really just a, 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 a token generation at, at scale and of course massive scale and it, I mean it, it might appear that it's actually thinking but it's not it's not actually thinking nobody knows that they just see a thing that looks like the thing that they saw in the movie that killed all the people. And then you got the other people going, oh, yeah, these things, if they get, it's going to be bad. You got people telling them, yep, this is the stuff that you saw in the movie. They're scared. No one is, is no one in San Francisco. Is there no one like me in San Francisco going, uh, Bob, uh, hey, come here. Can, can we, uh, hey, Sam. Yeah. Can we, let's, let's have a huddle. Can we, can we huddle? Can we have a huddle? Huddle up. Let's let's just let's have a huddle. Do you get that you're freaking people out? No, really. Like, there's no one in San Francisco that that has my angst and and pronounces the word really like really. No one. They're all too polite. They're all too fucking maca. Macchiato, chai macchiato out? Uh, yeah, half caffeine, please. Thanks. Half calf. Half calf. You need more calf. You need someone in there worried about what the fuck you're naming your products. <laughs> San Francisco is the twilight zone. Lama just built a vehicle <laughs> and left my system. <laughs> Need more Gen X in their meetings. They do, Lori K. Like, like seriously, they got to have some Gen X in there where they're like, well, yeah, I think this is kind of clever. No, it's not clever. It's stupid. It's stupid. Uh, we don't like to use the S word around here. Well, I'm going to keep using it until you make your names not stupid. Don't make me break out the R word. I'll flip and do it. You don't like to use the S word. Let's explore some intellectually challenged opportunities for improvement. Now, really? That's what you're going with? The orb? The thing that scans your retina. You're going to call it the orb, and you're going to make it a giant chrome thing that sits on a stick. Well, yeah, that's kind of cool, isn't it? No! I can't, I can't, people. Now you've upset me. <laughs> Ulu Harax Mel, have you heard? The pink bow is missing. Emilio's wife, the pink bow is missing. I asked the missus about it. She said, yes, I used it. I cannot find it anywhere. I don't know where she put the fucking pink bow. Now, you might say, but Kyle, couldn't you ask her? I could, but the only time I remember that the pink bow is missing is when I'm here. And I don't want to go out and get in a fight about the pink bow while I'm in the middle of one of these. That would be awkward. Honey, I need my pink bow. Why do you need a pink bow? Because I wear it on my thing. That's stupid. I know it's stupid. <laughs> Can I have the pink bow? I don't know where it is. Why don't you know where it is? Where did you do with it when you took it? She, I put it in my hair, but I don't know what I did with it after. Like, this is the conversation I have to have at some point, but I don't want to have it live. I mean, sure, it would be entertaining for you, but this is my life. <laughs> so, Ulu RX, if you're in here, apparently I need a second pink bow. <laughs> because, because apparently women like them. I really did think this was my thing. Even though there are rumors that I don't know how to wear them. 
<laughs> Ulu RX. Yes, yes, we have caught the thieves who steal from Ulu. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, my bow is missing. So, so just imagine me with a, a velour pink bow. <laughs> Reality TV time. Oh, yeah, this house. We <laughs> thank you, Kakif. <laughs> Scrounging around for a replacement bow for Kyle. <laughs> we we will send a kit with extra bows. <laughs> I dare you to drive to work with it on and make a TikTok post. I'll fucking do it if I can find it. I mean, I really don't have a problem looking like an idiot, as evidenced by this channel. <laughs> I need a haircut now. Look at all that luscious hair. Look at this. That's fantastic. I don't like to brag about the locks, but... uh. Read them and weep. <laughs> yeah, I know they have trimmers for the eye. I know, I know, I know. I don't want to hear it. I am trying to save the AI industry from itself with its shitty naming. And you're commenting on my eyebrows and my nose hair. We've got to have priorities, people. We've got to straighten this out. <sighs> we will send an express to see the bow drive. <laughs> I'm telling you, next time I see the bow, it's coming with me to work. <laughs> Did you like my driving thing? Listen, last time I drove and made a TikTok, Vicky yelled at me. She goes, she goes, don't make TikToks and drive. So I had to make a comment <laughs> that I'm looking at the road. I got my hands on the wheel. I did realize that because I talk with my hands, one of my hands was not on the wheel very much. But that's not the point. My movie was great. Because I had an awesome character like you, Kyle. Thank you, Joy. I, I'm glad I could. I'm glad I could tip your your uh, your uh, your movie over the edge. Actually, the fact that I uh, the fact that I yelled at Champy for singing in the middle in the middle of my interview, I thought that was pretty solid. You okay, Kyle? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> they named their agents Swarms. The first thing they come out with, the first thing OpenAI comes out with, they're, they're level three AGI. They're like, we got five levels of AGI. This is going to be cool. <laughs> right? Chat. Chatbots. Okay, that was fine. Chatbots. Reasoning. Reasonable. Agents. Agents. Autonomous agents. Things that assist you, like assistants. What are we going to call them? I know, swarms! What? What are you thinking? Do you want people to hate us and never try AI? <laughs> I, I, su I suspect that a plane is landing now. <laughs> Kyle point O. <laughs> Swarms. <clears throat> Part of the reason I haven't looked at swarms is because they called it swarms. <laughs> like, I don't think I want to be a party to this. <laughs> All right. I will commit to not yelling about swarms anymore. But really? Really? I could be a one-word consultant. You know what I should do? I should charge every major research lab $100,000 a year to come in once every two weeks. I'll commit to this. I'll come in for a half hour once every two weeks for hundred grand a year. I'm going to do this for up to 20 companies. You're like, that's a lot of money. Well, this is an important job. 
And I can come in person, but I have to fly first class. Or I can do a Zoom call. <clears throat> and then you reimburse me for what first class would have cost. That's fine, too. We can do it either way. And then what we do in that half hour is I get on there and I'm like, what you cooking up? And they're like, oh, we got this feature and that feature and that feature. I'm like, great. And then, and then I say, what are you thinking of naming them? Oh, we were thinking for this one, we'd call it Swarm. And then my only response will be either okay, if it's fine, which it never will be, or really? And then they know if I say really, they got to go rethink it. And if they don't have a lot of products, I'd be happy to explain why I said really. I think that's worth a hundred grand a year, right? Really? The, the previous one was called 4.0. You're going to call the new Omni Multimodal one 4.0? Okay, so it's 4 Omni? You're that, so, really? Yeah, that's what we were thinking. Uh, no. No would be the answer. No. And, and then the next time I come in, because they override me and didn't listen to me for that particular shit cluster, they come in and they, well, we got this new reasoning model. And w what are you going to call it? O1. Wait, what? Well, yeah, because it's like we're resetting and, and the O stands for open AI number one, like we're starting over. Wait, but didn't that O stand for Omni in the previous version? Yeah, but this is different because it's new. We're starting over. It's one. So they won't, because four, they won't look here that because they'll go back here. Really? Really? You, th does, are other people in the room thinking this makes sense? Really? Like that's my whole job. I'm like the really guy. How about you call it GPTR? What's that stand for? Reasoning. It reasons. You just call it an R. It's different than 4 O. <laughs> Look, I'm getting rash. I'm getting hives. Yes, no, Cam Catkin, I'm not good. I'm getting hives. <laughs> mommy, mommy, is that the really guy? <laughs> Feel, feel free to make the really guy in the uh, in the irregulars channel if you want to make some really images oh my god all right i'm sure it's past our bedtime isn't it <laughs> sorry brandon i didn't get to your shit but we had important things to talk about we had to talk about old people thinking things are still relevant in the world even though they're 45 years old we had to talk about shitty naming pro problems within. I, I mean, what's amazing with these companies is they're literally creating technology that's gonna that's gonna profoundly impact the future of humanity. And they didn't spend twenty seven dollars on a naming consultant. <laughs> Come on, Come on, please. Could make it suck less. Well, <laughs> all right. I hope this has been informative and helpful. This is the AI Learning Lab. If you're new here, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> These are the good times. <laughs> Joey, wee! <laughs> They didn't ask ChatGPT for a lot of good names. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. They, who said that, Lori? Yeah. They have a tool that they could use. They've got GPT-5 that they could use. They could have gone to GPT-5 and said, hey, uh, GPT-5, what are 10 ideas for names that are not this? And it would have given them good ones. And all I would have had to do is pick it. Oh, that's good. Let's call it magic. That'll piss off Pate. That's fine. I like it. It sounds good. It's like magic. Reasoning magic. GPT magic. All right, great. GPT think. 
because it's thinking. Pate, it's not really thinking. Okay, whatever, but everyone else thinks it's thinking. And we said that when, it, when we do it, it says thinking. Let's call it GP, GP think, GPT hink, GP think, GPT think. The thinker. Mm. Would have been better. O1. What's the O stand for? Open AI. So it's a small O. So your company name is now going to have a small O. Oh, no, it's going to have the big O. But it's a small O. So that small O is like the other small O that stands for Omni. You're gonna, really? Really? All right. I got to get out of here. I'm, my, I, my blood pressure is... I, I'm losing. I can, I can feel the hairs flying out of my follicles. Largely because I don't have a pink bow to hold them in. Because some woman thought it was a good idea to use the pink bow to hold her hair up while she did her makeup. It's exhausting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Didn't I say that like 10 minutes ago? This is the 30 minute goodbyes. <sighs> Little housekeeping. What's today? Wednesday? Today's Wednesday. Hump day. Isn't it amazing? We got all these weird ass things. TGI Friday hump day. Like hump day is like, well, we got over it because, you know, our existence during the week is so horrible. Like we've got gloomy Mondays, hump day Wednesdays, TGI Fridays. Like our entire definition of the days of the week are based on we fucking hate our jobs. And then we have a technology that comes along. It's like, hey, we got this technology. It's going to do your job for you. And everyone's like, I don't want to lose my job. Ooh, that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Vegas Moxie. That was almost as pretty as my pretty pink bow. <laughs> See? It just made me feel lighter all of a sudden. Our entire dialogue we've got restaurants we got restaurant chains named after the fact that we fucking hate our jobs and along comes comes the technology thank you silver fox that's going to do our job for us and we're like i don't want to lose my job but you hate it you hate it so much we've named <laughs> we've, we've 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 renamed the entire days of the week based on how much we hate work But it's the only way I have to value myself. Well, maybe that's the problem. Now, I know I'm being facetious. And if you just lost your job because of AI, <laughs> this probably sounds insensitive. <clears throat> but at some point, if you get curious about AI, th this is the, this is the, this is, here's where I get optimistic about this stuff. If you get curious about AI right now, if you hang out in places like this in the AI salon and you get active with this stuff, the thing that's scary that's going to replace your job or the tasks in your job, if you get good at it, you get to use that technology too. It's not just your company that's going to use that technology to replace you. You can use that technology to create a competitor to put your company out of fucking business. Or you could just have it write poems. <laughs> I think I'll just make music. <laughs> Why not? Thank you, Robert Rossi. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Kakeef, get used to it. What, me just being insane? All right, we are here. Doesn't that alone make us curious? Yeah. Oh, yes. It makes you quite irregular. <laughs> All right, so do me a favor, follow my channel, subscribe to these lives if you want to support me, um, and, uh, and then go to the AI Salon, join the AI Salon. This is, I think, one of the best things we can all do is be part of a community, like this community, like that community, where we get to know the other people, we get to know what they're good at, we get to know who they are, we get to know how they work. And we get to witness them redefine who they are 
and what they do. And then when work comes along and we need someone to do it with us, we'll hire them because we know they don't suck because we're in a community with them. That's what this is all about. Do you think we'll have more companies go in and out of business due to AI? Yeah, I think it's, I, 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 th <clears throat> I think there's going to be some companies that aggressively go lean into AI. <clears throat> and I think they're going to be fine. And then there's going to be some companies that do the Kodak thing, right? I think that the advertising holding companies run the risk right now of being Kodak. <laughs> advertising holding companies, how they make their money is time and materials. The more people they have working on projects for the more time, the more money they make because they charge by the hour. Clients now know that there's technology that can do what those agencies do in like 30 seconds. And what the agency will say is, well, but that's just crap and it's not good and but we need to look at it and but at some point a small agency with 10 people that are all AI literate are going to show up at that big client and go, "We'll deliver this work for half the money, deliver it twice as fast and it'll be better." And one of those companies is going to go, we'll take that bet. Because even if you're wrong, we don't like paying these guys this much money. So we'll just save some money and the off chance that you're any good. And one of those 10-person companies is going to be really good. And they're going to redefine that industry. And that could, that could break an entire sector. And so I think we'll see a lot of companies completely resist AI because it's an existential threat to their business model. Not to their business, to their business model. And they're not going to be willing to change that. That's what happened to Kodak. They invented the digital camera. And they marched it right out of the executive suites and says, not on our watch. We're a silver halide company here. This is about chemicals. I think you should all know that by now. You take your little pixels and you just march it down the street there, buddy. Marge, bring me another cigar. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think and, – and I think that um, some of those companies are going to be okay, but a lot aren't. Interesting, good perspective. Thank you. It's changing business models, period. It is. And it's, you know, the companies – the companies that – like like there's um, <clears throat> there's this guy – in Boulder, there's a special effects house called $11 Bill. And the CEO is this guy named Christian Robbins. Robbins, I think. Robbins, yeah. Um, he spoke at the AI Salon. He's aggressively, aggressively incorporating AI into everything they do. And it, you know, they're having to like duct tape stuff together. But they're now able to turn around effects faster and faster and faster. And as the tools get better and better and better, they're going to be able to swap out traditional techniques with new techniques. Um, so companies like that are going to thrive, I think. Um, and then companies that are just like, well, no, this is how we do things. You know, we use we use, you know, this 3D workflow and and we're never going to use AI because it's intellectual property theft and whatever. They're going to use whatever excuses they can use to avoid it. And they're going to get blindsided. They're, they're not going to get blindsided. They're just going to be whistling past the grave graveyard <laughs> while all these all the traffic is running beside them really fast. So anyway. <clears throat> all right. I'm out of here. All right, who's in here tonight? We got Cat. I see Side Hustle Mimi. Kyle, you just gave me a flashback to my first job. They had Chris oh oh, oh Crystal Cigar ashtrays in the conference rooms. <laughs> Sally, bring me a whiskey. Neat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
Think too of railroads. Imagine if they would have recognized they were in the transportation business. Yeah, Kodak didn't realize they were in the memories business. They had the marketing, a Kodak memory. The marketing was there, but it didn't work its way to the C-suite. They didn't, they didn't understand what business they were in. You guys, I'm going to Paris in the AM because of this channel. Oh, that's awesome, Anne-Marie. I, I was going to ask you about that, what, what you were going for. That's so cool. That's so cool. All right, I'm out of here. All right, Ann Murphy. Did I just call you Ann Murray? I did. Ann Murphy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> but have fun in Gay Perry. Um, I I would send you off with a pink bow, but there's a there's an there's a situation. <laughs> Kakiv side hustle. Mimi Tobias in the house. Ocean in the house. Um, will we leave the term "you push or abuse AI" to the max? You push, wait, will we have the term you push or abuse AI to the max? I don't know, maybe, maybe. I, I think that, I don't think we're gonna push AI. I think, I think at best we're gonna collaborate with it. And I think we're quickly moving to a thing where we're gonna try to keep up with it. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna try to understand what it makes possible. I think that's where we're headed. <laughs> we'll be like, uh, hey, AI, could, could, could we play? Um, you could... I mean, just go look at the thing Mark Andreessen did where uh, he, he put $50,000 into this bunch of agent bots that were on a Discord server that talked to each other and came up with a meme, a meme and then a meme coin. And then they created a cryptocurrency and then they launched it. And now it's worth like $320 million. <laughs> could, hey, can we play? Could, 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 no? All right. Okay. We'll be over here in the human part. <laughs> I think that's where we're headed. Um, Kirk T in the house. Cam Kacken in the house. Great to see you. Robert Rossi, thank you as always. Mr. IT and Murphy. Drew and AI calling in from down under. Vegas Moxie, great to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Joe Wee in the house. Uh, Live, laugh, love. Good in the house. Uh, Kyle, oh yeah, flashback to the cigars. Very nice. Da -da 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 -da. Danielle in the house. Uh -uh. Sammy Minister. Um, Emilio's wife, Daniel Quebecer. We found him as his show and tell images. I'm glad you're back on track. Um, who else we got? Let's see. E -e -e -e. Archetypal architect. Vic Van Poe or Poff. Emilio's wife. He's asking Emilio's wife if he's weird. If you're asking if you're weird, I think we know the answer. <laughs> Not saloon, it's salon. Thank you. I won't make that mistake again. That's a good call. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a fantastic night. I hope you had fun tonight. I uh, I don't know if I had fun, but I think I exercised some, some demons. Thanks for the laughs. All right, Lori K. Great to see you. Peace out, everybody. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat place. Peace. Thanks for everything.